Good morning, I'm Arlie Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for April 5th, 2024. Uh, as many of you may have seen yesterday, I used the update yesterday to rant a bit about the insanity of the political establishment in the West. And they are insane. The, the, the attempt to continue a losing war in Ukraine with the idea that somehow this will weaken and destroy the, the government of Russia and open it up to looting for the corporate cartels of the West is a complete deluded fantasy. And yet we just had the 75th anniversary of NATO, which was founded in 1949 by 12 members. And as its initial Secretary General Lord Ismay of the United Kingdom said, the purpose of NATO is to keep the United States in Europe, to keep Russia out of Europe, and to keep Germany down. That's still what's going on today. That's the policy. And it was at that time a British policy. During the 50s, as the British began to lose the, the power they had over the previous two centuries to dictate terms to the world, they increasingly depended on their control over the institutions of the United States to make the United States the center of the global empire. And with that, British geopolitics, the doctrine of divide and conquer, the use of religious and ethnic and tribal loyalties to pit nations and people against each other, became the policy of Washington and the U.S. political establishment. And today it's both political parties that are marching to this drumbeat. And that's why we see the continued support for the proxy war against Russia in Ukraine, <clears throat> which Biden intends to fund with 60 billion more dollars. And it now appears that Speaker Mike Johnson, despite all the protests that he's with Trump and he's against these wars, that he's going to try and figure out a way to continue the war. And that's the way it goes in Washington, bipartisan consensus. Now, that must be disrupted, because I, I want to give you a sense of what the actual degree of craziness is behind this consensus. And it was exposed in an article that I'll be linking in the description page by Lyndon LaRouche that he wrote in 2001, right after the 9-11 attacks about what is called the breakaway ally scenario, which goes back to Henry Kissinger's time as Secretary of State. And what it essentially says is that Israel can be used as a tool of this British geopolitical policy, now American geopolitical policy, and that the way it works <coughs> is that Israel would launch an attack on one of its Arab neighbors. A, a pretty strong attack that would lead to a war in which Israel could then say to the United States, okay, we started it, but you have to finish it. Now, this became U.S. policy under Kissinger. It became even more U.S. policy after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1992, the breakup of the Soviet Union, which led to the the declaration by the neoconservatives around Dick Cheney, Paul Wolfowitz, Richard Pearl, Douglas Fife, and others, uh, their statement that the United States is now the sole superpower and that it's up to the United States to impose a unipolar order for the benefit of so-called freedom and democracy, by which they really meant the freedom and democracy to loot the people of the world by destroying sovereign states and imposing institutional policies of austerity so that the loot can be totally gathered in by the establishment. That's what the unipolar order is. That's what the rules-based order that's so often uh, uh, encanted by, by Blinken as he's trying to, to say that this is the way the world must work. And what it really means is U.S. and NATO military power to enforce an unequal distribution of world's resources. That is the thievery by parasitical corporate interests 
of the raw materials of the world, no longer just the global south, but now they have their eyes set on Russia as they did in the 1990s. Putin stopped it. Why do you think they're trying to weaken Russia today? Because they still want those raw materials, those strategic metals from Siberia and Russia. And they still fear that Europe, led by Germany, will see that it's in its real interest to be in an alliance with Russia. That's what the Ukraine war is about. Now, the, the Gaza fighting the Israeli genocide in Gaza, what is that about? Well, if you really look at it, what is the whole purpose of, of Zionism, the settler colonial policy that began with the uh, late, 19, uh, late 19th century and was formalized with the Balfour Declaration of 1917, which promised the establishment of a Zionist state in Palestine? Now, did the British elite really feel so concerned about the poor treatment of the Jews of Europe that they thought it was fair to give them a state? No, it had nothing to do with that. Most of the leaders of the, the British oligarchy were anti-Semitic, and they saw themselves as the British Israelites. They saw Israel as a potential tool to use for the geopolitical destabilizations that would prevent an alliance of Europe and Eurasian nations from moving into Southwest Asia and Africa and challenge the control of those raw materials and those strategic corridors by the British Empire. That was what British geopolitics is all about, to protecting the power of the British to set the terms of trade and to run and control the, the trade routes for the benefit of the private interests of the city of London. And when the British were no longer powerful enough to protect it, they brought in the United States as a dumb giant on a British leash. And that's what we are today. Now, the fact that the British are, are no longer the brains of the operation, and if you look at people like Sunak and the, his government and the so-called opposition, Starmer, you realize that, that these are people who couldn't run a two-car funeral procession, much less an empire, but they still think that they have that power. As long as they can call Joe Biden, as long as they can call their, their colleagues in the Council on Foreign Relations and the Atlantic Council, to continue these war policies, they think they can control it. Now, the breakaway ally scenario, where does that come in? Well, after Kissinger put it forward in his manipulations of the Middle East in the 70s, it then included a, a, a slight shift brought in by Zbigniew Brzezinski, who is basically a geopolitician of the Kissingerian stripe, a little bit different. Kissinger was more of a so-called realpolitik, uh, balance of power, whereas Brzezinski believed that you can manipulate nations to fight wars that will allow you to completely control them. And Brzezinski's strategy was drafted out of work of Bernard Lewis, a British historian, about the arc of crisis. How can you surround the Soviet Union with Muslim opposition and out of this grew the whole Islamic terror operation. It was Brzezinski who started it by luring the Russians, the Soviet Union, into Afghanistan in 1979, and then armed tribal units in Afghanistan, one of which became the Taliban. The other one was bringing in the Saudis through Osama bin Laden to create al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. And then at the same time they were running the Afghan war, they were targeting Iraq. They targeted Iraq first by having a, an eight-year war between Iraq and Iran, which was very violent, very deadly, used chemical weapons supplied by Donald Rumsfeld in the United States. And then after that ended, the decision was made to destroy Iraq. And this included the Gulf War uh, when George H.W. Bush was in office and declared the new world order coming into existence. But then once the 9-11 attack happened, 
And by the way, the, the whole origin of the 9-11 attack, how it happened, was the U.S. intelligence really blindsided? These questions are still not satisfactorily answered, although most of you suspect that there was an inside job that was part of this because the 9-11 attack was used to, to bring into full power the secret government through a police state operation, censorship, control of media, and also war, the gearing up of wars, first in Afghanistan, then in Iraq, based on completely fraudulent, cooked up intelligence assessments that Saddam was part of 9-11. And once that was launched, We've been in wars ever since, coups and, and uh, destabilizations in, in Libya, uh, the whole operation to get rid of Assad in Syria. And who did we support in Syria? We supported the so-called moderate rebels who actually turned out to be ISIS and Al-Qaeda. And think about that when you look at this whole question of what happened in Moscow at the Crocus City Hall with the slaughter of 140 plus Russians blamed on ISIS. Well, the ISIS has become terrorists for hire. The ISIS turned against Russia because Russia actually did what the United States said it was going to do, which was to destroy them in the Middle East. Russia came into Syria to defend the nation against terrorists who, as General Michael Flynn pointed out, were trained and armed by the CIA. So there is a CIA hand in the deployment of international terrorism. It's part of this breakaway ally scenario. So now we see what Israel did. Israel's in trouble in Gaza. It's having trouble completing the deal of destroying Hamas, which by the way, Israel funded. They funded Hamas, as Netanyahu has bragged, to the tune of $1 billion. They're having trouble finishing the war. And as a result, they're going to expand it. And they're going to expand it in such a way that the United States will have to be brought in to bail them out, the breakaway ally scenario. Why do you think the Israelis launched a missile to hit the Iranian consulate in Damascus? This is outrageous. This is an attack on the sovereign nations. Did uh, Biden condemn it? No, he supposedly scolded Netanyahu for the wholesale slaughter of Palestinians in Gaza, but he didn't use the one tool that he has to change Israeli policy, which is to cut off the aid, the military aid, the financial aid, and the political backup that's enabled Israel to continue this genocidal attack. So that's what we're dealing with a lunatic establishment which still believes it can weaken Russia through the destruction of Ukraine, which believes it can break up the potential of the BRICS to expand in Southwest Asia. Remember, Egypt, Iran, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Ethiopia, all of which surround the area of the Mediterranean Red Sea uh, area, all of them join the BRICS. And now, that's a region which is being pushed toward general regional war, which could become a world war and including a nuclear war. And the Israelis are counting, that is Netanyahu is counting on the Kissingerian Brzezinski strategy of the breakaway ally to defend Israel. Now, how does that serve the interests of the people of, of Western Europe and the United States? It doesn't. It serves the private corporate interests that fund war, that use war as a basis of destroying those countries that might move against being looted, and instead enable them to continue the looting process, whether it's oil and natural gas, diamonds, gold, uh, rare earth metals, and so on. That's their policy. And puppets like Biden, like most of the Democratic Congress, most of the Republican congressmen, they are puppets of this establishment, and they either do it because they're, they're getting lucrative contracts and promise of money. How many of these senators and congressmen become millionaires? Or they're being blackmailed by the FBI. That's the political establishment we have. Now, ultimately, it's up to us to get rid of them. But we need a strategy, and that strategy includes, first of all, knowing who they are, and secondly, 
how to achieve a basis for sustainable peace through mutual economic development. Now, that's why the Schiller Institute is sponsoring an online conference on April 13th on Lyndon LaRouche's OASIS plan, the only plan, the unique plan for creating circumstances where Israel and its Arab neighbors, including Palestine, can have mutually beneficial economic progress that will serve as a basis for giving up the hatred which has been imposed through the British imperial project called Zionism. Now, I, I urge you to register for the conference. It will be online April 13th, available to everyone. And then go to our website and read as much as you can on the OASIS project. We have a 14-minute video, which is an excellent summary of what the OASIS project is. So I hope my rant caught your attention. We're at a moment where we're, we're heading toward World War III, which could be a nuclear war. In a sense, ironically, this could end the endless wars by ending humanity on the planet. Instead of that, we need to inspire the best in all people to work together for peace and economic development. So that's my summary for this week. I hope that you'll share this video. Uh, you'll sign up for our website at, at thelaroucheorganization.com, and I'll see you again on Monday.